Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today we're looking at the new uh, Waves Abbey Road Studio 3, which is this guy here. And essentially what it is, is an emulation of the control room of Studio 3 at Abbey Road by Waves. Now, um, so what? This is kind of a, a weird concept. I mean, it, it stems from the Waves NX technology, which is uh, uses sort of spatial recognition of your head within a space uh, to simulate over headphones an actual acoustic space. So what they've done is they've measured an enormous amount of uh, measurements of the control room at Abbey Road uh, to do with, you know, how far your ears are from the speakers. And this is for the large monitors. So we've got three sets. We've got far, mid, and near. And all of these have been measured. With the, we have a guest on Sonic Talk, a guy called Yoad Nevo, who is one of the Wave developers, as well as a, a renowned remixer, a mix engineer, producer, that kind of thing. And he said the amount of data that they had to gather just to sort of measure this was astonishing. But what it actually does is it calculates the direction and the uh, early reflections and the timings of your head in that space using the NX technology. Now, Waves do this in a number of ways. Uh, I'll show you, uh, if we go to the uh, plugin, we could do this in a couple of ways. There's one way where we can use the uh, your FaceTime camera. So here's my FaceTime camera, and I'm using, it. see, it's recognizing my face in the FaceTime camera, and it's converting that. You can see that the, the head tracking information is, is is basically working. I mean, there it goes. And this is all well and good, so you don't need any other hardware. And the other way you could do this is via the uh, Waves NX Head Tracker. It's about 100 bucks, but they're doing bundles at the moment. In fact, there's a bundle with Abbey Road for $129, which is a pretty good bargain because Abbey Road Studio 3 is uh, 99 bucks on its own in a special offer. So we just put this onto the headphones. There's a, a little sort of rubber grip thing. So there we've got that, excuse my uh, rather messed up headphones, and I put that on. So now, if I go to my settings, you can see, let's just get the settings up. So the head tracker, I turn the FaceTime camera off. The Bluetooth tracker has connected, and we can see there's positional data. So if we come back to the plugin, and switch it to uh, track via NX Tracker. Just center that. If I put my overhead here, you can see that it's a much smoother. I mean, this is tracking at approximately, it's about, um, I don't know, I think it's uh, 40 or 50 frames a second. You also get a wider degree of uh, of tracking. So when you're turning around, you get much more positional data. So essentially what we've got with this is the ability to track your sp your head in the virtual space. It can also be used for surround sound mixing as well, um, where it emulates the sound of a surround sound, but I don't have any experience in that. So I'm just gonna focus on the stereo instance, instance for now. One other thing that you need to do to make sure that this is accurate is you, you put in the measurements of your the circumference of your head and the measurement between your ears as well. And that kind of fine tunes the algorithm to be able to kind of really get your uh, the effects of the psychoacoustic and the, 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 the early reflections and whatnot in the space that you're virtually listening to. Another thing that it allows you to do is add a headphone EQ. And there are these various models here. I don't have any of these. Uh, the model that I've got is, um, it's actually the Senai or Senel, which is an Indian uh, manufacturer. And it's very much based on the Sony Studio headphones, which is a, quite an old one. And they're ones that I know really well. So that's what I would personally use. So I haven't applied the EQ, but if you've got one of those, then it's got a curve that's sort of designed to make the most of your uh, headphone uh, EQ as well. Right, so where do we put this? So on the master track here, I bring my plugins in. I've got my general dynamics plugin. I've got a frequency analysis plugin. I've got a good sort of bus compressor. And then at the end of that, in my monitor path, I've got the Abbey Road Studio 3, which is AU, a VST, um, all of those good things. So that, obviously, I wouldn't want to uh, mix down through that, but I want to monitor through that. 
Um, you, there are various ways that you could set this up via an aux bus and whatnot. So yeah, you can do all of that. But I've, just for s simple purposes, like I say, in this, I've got a mix here, which is something that I was quite happy with. And I wanted to get a sense of how it sounded through this system. So let's try this out. So now I'm going to go, uh, let's go, let's bring the plugin back up. And then I've got my overhead. So you can see, as well as my bald spot, you can see that it's tracking my head. OK, so we'll turn it off for the time being, just taking it out of uh, circulation here. And we'll just we'll come back to a point in the mix where the bass comes in, because that's going to give us the most sensation. So this is off. It's quite a sort of ambient stereo mix. So I'm just going to hit play. It takes a little while for it all to get going. Here we go. So that's my mix as it is. So now I'm going to switch this in. And we're listening to the big speakers here. And there was just, I, for me, it just went oof. And there was all this extra bass. We'll go to the mids. We can hear there's a change in the coloration of the bottom end. The nears, again, it seems to sort of narrow a little bit. I'm just going to fast forward this a bit so there's a bit more uh, top end information in there. Right, so now I want you to move your head. You need to be listening to this on headphones. So I'm going to turn my head to the left. And I'm hearing it move around back to the centre and then turn to the right. Go back to the bigs. I'm hearing all of these details and we'll just take it out again. Go to the bigs and then take it out. What I'm hearing is sort of more complex early reflections, which is sort of smudging and smearing the stereo imaging, but I'm hearing the room and I'm, to me, I, I'm hearing this bottom end and I'm sort of thinking, yeah, that sounds all right. I think that's going to work okay. Um, where you can really hear it, if I come back to the main side of it, I've got a kick that comes in at this point. So, right, I'm going to solo the kick. So we'll come out of, we'll take this out, just close up a bit. So we, now we're in solo mode on the kick. So, so that's without the NX, without the Abbey Road. So I'm going to bring the, oh my. Suddenly you're hearing all of this early reflection and room. And if I start to, again, you know, work, work with me here. If you turn your head to the left, the point source is really changing. And to the right. And you can hear all of those early reflections, which is quite interesting how that works. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up uh, an EQ uh, and see what happens if we start to EQ that stuff and sort of what kind of details we can make. To me, it sounds like the kick could be a little bit more thwacky. You know, we, maybe we could have a little bit more thwack. So I've, I've switched it in. I'm going to listen on the far monitors uh, to begin with. So here I have got a frequency. So we'll, we'll, let's play. So I'm really sort of poking that kind of 1K-ish, 8, 8, 900, 850 it is roughly. I like that. Let's just check that on the nears. And without. Yeah, I like that. I think particularly on the bigs, it sounds pretty good. Sounds like there could be, could there be any more bottom end? No, that's probably a bit too much, isn't it? Okay, so now we come out of solo, and let's listen to that uh, in context and see how that feels. Turning to the left. Turning to the right. And now I, I'm almost forgetting that I've got headphones on because I've got a pair of Genelec 1029As in here, and it sounds quite in the ballpark of that. So when I'm moving around, I'm getting the sense that the speaker, I do, I am listening to the pair, a pair of speakers. It's quite weird. I, and you, you're, I have tested this, so I know if you've got headphones on listening to this mix, 
and you turn it up a reasonable amount and you turn roughly in sync with me, you're going to get a similar effect. And it's it allows you to kind of get a sense of whether things are right or not. So one thing I will notice is um, if I go back to my uh, pads, I've got... I'll take that out again. It doesn't sound as stereo as it does in the headphones. So it feels like maybe what I could do is broaden it out a little bit, sort of enhance that. And I've got the delay return here. So I'm just going to add an effect, which is, uh, let's just bring this up. I can bring, make it a bit bigger. It's just a stereo enhance, which will take the delays out a bit wider, just so that I can kind of get a bit more stereo-ness going on. So... just throws it out a little bit to me. I quite like the way that it's doing that. Uh, the other thing I want to check is, is the bass all right? Because this, uh, we, we just get bass. Well, if, actually, if we go here and we can't put our loop back on, we should have bass in abundance. So if I start turning this up. Oh yeah, you can hear there's way too much going on there the sort of bloom in the room. Try it on the knees. And, and this is where it seems to make the difference. I mean, uh, I'm getting a sense of the sort of the tightness and the, the bottom end stuff, stuff that's quite hard to get right in headphones unless you know them really, really well. So that's where I think this really shines. It's sort of figuring out, you know, as we know, we quite often, <clears throat> when we're checking mixes, we want to check mixes in the car, in the room. We walk out of the room. What does it sound like from outside? It's like, oh, yeah, that's lumpy. You know, whatever you can get. And this is like another tool in that arsenal. I mean, where I think this could perhaps be even more effective, actually, let's just, while, I, while we're, let's play this a second, because I would really like to show you what it's like when you spin it around 360 degrees. interesting anyway I, I digress where i think it would be really great is if we could have it with uh like in a car like i don't know like a, a humvee with a hip massive hip-hop bass sub bass so we could just see just how enormous it was i mean a nicely tuned system so we could just check that and also it'd be nice to see some like orotone some really crappy little speakers so you could just get a sense of whether they're going I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how, how exactly what's going on with the maths of this thing, but it seems it would make a lot of sense to be able to expand on this. Um, but it's quite interesting, isn't it? I mean, if you've if you've been listening on headphones and you're hearing that, you may or may not have the same sensation I have because I have visually got a pair of speakers in front of me, and there are times when I'm listening to it, and it feels like. I'm listening to the speakers, and particularly when I'm turning around. And what's really weird, if there was somebody moving around in the room behind me or there's something going on, you look, and it really freaks you out because you're expecting to hear them because your ears are telling you that you're not listening on headphones, that you're listening to the speakers in front of you. Um, I wonder whether or not actually having a pair of speakers in front of you, even if they're not switched on, will somehow aid the um, the psychoacoustic effect of this. But it's, it's a fascinating uh, technology. And one thing... You know, for 99 bucks, I think they're doing it on moment. Uh, what's the, if we have a quick look, let's have a look at uh, Abbey Road and see what they, what the, what the deal is. So that's it. So yeah, Abbey Road Studio 3 is uh, on sale at 99 bucks. So it's actually normally 200 bucks. I don't know when that ends, but that seems like uh, it'd be worth a saving. Uh, I mean, no, no ways do a lot of uh, um, say, uh, sales. So you never, you know, you can always expect to find something. And this, you could get the Studio 3 plus the NX Head Tracker for 129 bucks. So, I mean, it's not like super cheap, uh, but it does do something very interesting, and it's not phasey. You know, that we're not. I'm not listening and hearing and thinking, "Oh, that's all wrong." There's all this sort of mush. It's actually quite accurate, and uh, we've played it to a few people who've just sort of come in and sort of have a listen to this, and they're going, "Ooh, that's really interesting." The way that when you move like that, you get this kind of sense that um, there's some there is some stereo movement, and you are listening to a, a source that's outside of your headphones. And like I say, it does enable you to uh, uh, evaluate the bottom end 
and the, those some other frequencies that you don't normally get in your headphones or perhaps even on the speakers that you use. I mean, there's one thing I haven't really touched on. That's because I don't mix in surround, so I don't really feel qualified. You can also set this up to be a, a surround sound version, so it can have up to six inputs, so six uh, that would be a five one. And that means that you can have multiple sources. And then what you see is, if, as we spin it around, you can see that there's this, there are these other speakers around the room which allow you to effectively, you know, pretend like, well, uh, pretend, I say, uh, simulate like you're listening to that, which which I'm told can work quite well. I don't know whether you would want to necessarily mix a feature film on it, um, you know, just on headphones. I guess you could at a pinch, but I have absolutely no experience of surround, so I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. But I'm told it's also very effective for setting up kind of front rear things, and you get some really interesting simulations. Another thing I noticed was it's possible to actually automate some of these uh, or all of the parameters against this. So it's quite possible what you could do is actually process specific tracks through this with kind of spatial rotation and movement that's, that's going to sound very different to panning because it's got this early reflection. So you could actually process and bounce mix elements into this to kind of throw them round and into some interesting spaces. So there is the potential for some processing, though I don't suppose it would be... Uh, it, it would it, it would probably not show up as much uh, in regular speakers as it would in headphones. But again, you, there's the potential there for some interesting possibilities. And like I say, all you have to do is automate those parameters and you can basically access all of them, as far as I can tell, uh, via DAW automation. Anyway, that was the Waves uh, Studio 3 Abbey Road plugin uh, combined with the NX headphones uh head tracker, which again, you don't need. You can use uh, your webcam if you've got a, a computer that's got enough power to dedicate to give you a decent frame rate on that. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next time.